Good afternoon. Welcome to my session. In this session, I will um, first walk you through the basic concept and technology of U2X, and then we'll, I will um, reveal a potential uh, security threat introduced by U2X key ready mechanism. Then in the end, I will uh, give some um, mitigation and countermeasures. Uh, about me, my name is Wang Kang. I'm from China, and I work for for Alibaba Group, which is one of the largest uh, e-commerce company in China. And my uh, research focusing on IoT, Internet of, of, of Things, and vehicle to everything, um, and trusted computing and cyber physics systems. Um, I was a speaker of Black Hat uh, USA 2017 on a uh, resonant ultrasound to smart devices to to um, mess with or mess with the VR device or iPhone or um, drones. And I was a speaker of Euro, Black Hat Europe 2015 about GPS spoofing and Wi-Fi spoofing location. It's very uh, tricky things. I also a uh, founder of um, an open source mirror site in China called Tuna. Yeah, Tuna. It's, and this is my email address. <laughs> it's very easy to remember. It's <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you only have to remember the eight. Oh, zero to eight. It's very easy to remember. And I was a very lucky Linux kernel contributor. Uh, you can find this output is one. <laughs> Only one line of this kind of course. <laughs> Very interesting. About TDDLT USB driver. <laughs> okay, the introdu introduction to U2F. U so, what is U2F? Uh, it's called universal two factor. As we know, um, two factor authentication is considered to be the um, most secure way to um, put user's account. And in a safety mode. So, uh, <coughs> the, what is FIDO? Because we also call it FIDO Internet. The FIDO means Fast Identity Online, it's an uh, open standard alliance founded by Google and uh, I think Ubico. Um, now, the U2F devices manufactured including Ubico based, on, based in Sweden, and the natural key is a proud German uh, company, I think. I am freaking a Chinese company. Um, now, uh, the U2F has many benefits over the traditional key because, uh, for example, the, they have native support for Chrome browser, and other browsers are supported on the way, like Firefox. You can at least use a plugin to, to, to do U2F authentication. And it, has, uh, it is driver free because uh, it uses USB HIV protocol. I uh, basically like the keyboard or mouse. And it's also the physics layer or the raw message layer uh, can be run around the BTLE, means uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, and NFC. And this is a brief uh, history of U5 U2F. Um, in 2012, uh, Unicode and Google created U2F. And 2013, um, the U2F techni technical certifications is put into the FIDO lines. And for 2014, the support for Gmail and Chrome starts. <coughs> and the uh, 2016 UK government. And uh, I think 2017, um, I remember the early of 2017, um, <laughs> Facebook supports uh, U2F as well. And now uh, the portfolio. Facebook, Dropbox, and GitHub, all, all of them now support U2F. And for open source projects like GitLab and uh, where's the proud GitLab? GitLab user. Yeah. Uh, and uh, GitLab and WordPress now uh, supports U2F by a uh, simple plugin you install it. <coughs> so, what is the principle of U2F? It's, it's nothing new, I think. It's basically the public and private key um, system. As for the library and party, it's, it, uh, you can think it as um, the Gmail, the Facebook, or the um, other cloud service provider. And for the client, you can consider it to be the browser. And the US, U2F device, you can think, is 
only this big. So uh, the reliability party, it has the record of your uh, public key. And so when the second factor authentication starts, the reliability party sends the key handle and the application ID and the challenge down to the client. So the key handle, basically, you can think of it as an index to your private key stored in your USB device. And app ID, um, basically, they are uh, app ID are the um, domain name of your HTTPS site. And the client, after the client receives those parameters, they check the application ID first. <clears throat> then the client simply forward all the parameters to your uh, user apps device. Um, the user apps device has a microcontroller to handle the USB um, uh, protocol. So first, the user apps device look up the private key associated with the key handle H. Yeah. Then the counter inside, which I will be talking later, is a counter issue. The counter increased by one. Then the counter, the other parameters assigned by the security element, uh, which is a cryptographic um, chip, I think. Um, they returned a signature from the security element. Then the, all the parameters are sent back to the client. The client then forward it to the cloud. Then the cloud checks the signature and finishes the whole verification. Uh, this is a <coughs> snapshot of the Dropbox. I fired up the Chrome um, web debug console. Um, this is a challenge they forwarded for, they are forwarded from the browser to the USB device. Uh, this is a snapshot. I think I can show you on well, yeah. Yeah. because I plug this key, it's an open source one. Um, yeah. I first register it with like um, CCC, DDD. Next, yeah. then it's performed. It's a, my device now can grab. I have to hmm, plug the. Oh, oh, there's a new feature I didn't find before. And the technical data includes I, um, the origin, the domain name, and the challenge, FIE. And the response data is from my key. And then I log in with the big password. I also has to press the button. Then the uh, second factor authentication is successful. Ah, no. The response data, and the signature data, and the counter, and my user presence indicator touch the green parameter. Um, on the background, on the background is, uh, V2F.py is an open source project and U2F later for debugging. I think the, the last, the demo.utrico.com slash U2F, the site is very useful for basic technical explanation. And I, uh, one of my friends built a, a U2F0, an open source key, this one for me. So the, the design is very simple, it only has eight take components. This is the button uh, for user presence, and this is the LED, and uh, this is for uh, electric protection, and this is a microcontroller, and this is the security element. Uh, the security element is from Atmel ATDCC 508A. It has 16 slots for public key and private key storage. Um, now, the question comes, um, if the storage capability is 16, um, is that means we have only 16 websites to buy this single key. 
So uh, um, the final UTF has a support for infinite key numbers, key numbers. So what did they do? So uh, let, let me um, do some basic explanation. So the security element, the chip, stores public key and private key pairs. And the uh, on-chip operation supports key generation and key uh, and the signal, uh, data signing. And it also supports key importation from outside, from your um, computer to the security element. And the, it has a problem of limited storage. So the solution is use a single device secret, which means the master key. And we use a key derivation mechanism called the key wrapping to um, regenerate all the essential private key from one single master key. This is from the FIDO U2S um, standard file. A U2F device, the key handle, remember the key handle H, doesn't have to be the index to the private key. Instead, the key can store the, for the origin and the hash and to to unwrap, to retrieve the private key. So uh, as for the open source project, UTF0, its later version of formula supports this formula. Uh, remember the key handle is sent from the cloud to your device. And uh, it has the nonce, it's a, it's a random number. And the private key, you can, after you receive the nonce, you, um, the, the UTF0, the microcontroller, get this nonce and the app ID which is the website the domain name. And the device key is stored on this chip. They do a HMAC. This HMAC operation is inside this security element. So they regenerate the private key. Then to the HMAC part, the private key can do another HMAC to the uh, verification of the whole process. So it's very neat and, and easy to And for the uh, Ubico company, they don't have the essential open source code for audition. So they have uh, they provided a diagram, basically the same principle. For from the red part is the regular U2F operation. You get an app ID, you get a private key, you do a HMAC for um, you, you, you send it to your, uh, you, you do the signature. But the blue part is the key derivation process. So uh, should we be worried about anything of this process? Um, someone asked in the Ubico forum in 2016, November. He says, I was given a key. I want to reset. We reset the U2F secret, which is a master secret. Is this possible? Or a similar question was asked in 2014. And the answer then is might come in the future. But in 2016, the typical guys said there is no way to reset the secret. You have to trust us. So uh, I was very paranoid, so I do some experiment. Uh, so my proposed attack scenario is, first, the attacker extracts the master key during the manufacture process of this UBT, uh, this, this, this U2F0, it's an open source pro uh, project. Then, attacker clone this U2F key. In this case, we are integrating with a software U2F implementation called V2F.py. Then, I give, the attacker gives the UTF key to a victim. Then I uh, assume the victim uses this key to register with Google or other services. Then attackers get to know the password from uh, like uh, phishing or other, or, or torturing or <laughs> something. Um, then login. This is a scenario. And after some cryptographic Experiment and some simple coding. I come up with these results. 
this is the regular authentication process. I use this key to authenticate with the demo site. It's a regular process. Then I unplug it, use the v2f.py. I integrated the hierarchy mechanism with v2f.py. Then the login was a success. I tried another website called Gmail. And no, 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 no big, no big deal. I think it's the same uh, principle. Then try to use Facebook because it's Chrome, so it's not that scary. It's, it, I, I, I Chrome this key during the manufacturing process. Facebook and GitHub. And the last one is a um, Australian email provider called Fastmail. It's very fast, so I use it and it's called Fastmail. Um, the first part is no big, no, no big deal, just like other case. But I try to roll the anti-clone counter back by one. Now the anti-clone counter is two. I can control it and roll it back to one. And login <coughs> and the login process still works. So the first mail didn't check the any clone counter, and I uh, send an email with to, to them. Okay, what is any clone counter? Um, so first, inside the security element, this is a sentence from the data sheet of 8 a It says the counter is a high injurious monotonic counters, um, which means you can't um, roll it, control it using your phone now. And let's say the victim or the user use, uh, now has a state of 100 uh, or 100, then the next time he authenticate with the cloud, the counter uh, goes by 1 to 101. So the cloud only has to check whether the new counter is larger than any of recorded counters. So if an attacker cloned this key, he has to he has two ways. First, he, uh, he just to guess a very large counter, let's say 900. But this uh, scenario is mm, not so good because the victim will surely be aware of because he has to press 801 times to bypass, to, to, to let his key be bigger than the victims, uh, the, the attackers I handle. So if the attacker is smart enough, he can do the best try of 102. He, he just patiently to, to do every check. So uh, as for Google and Facebook, they um, they didn't give a warning when this scenario happens. So our key findings has two, two, two basic key findings. First is the security model. And um, in traditional key model, I think, is, is basically about the ultimate trust route. Let's say if you have a bank account, we trust the bank ultimately. So we also trust the key issued by everything, uh, everything issued by the bank. So we also trust the um, traditional dedicated USB security key. But this, this key, like this one, this one is open source. This one is uh, commercial of the COTS key. So this, these are general purpose USB key. You can buy from other, other um, website or be given from a friend. So these keys bring us a new problem to the security model. We should downgrade the trust level from the ultimate, which means uh, also can be called the uh, cryptographic chip level, downgrade to manufacturer trust level, which means we, after we receive this chip, um, we should at least uh, do a key regeneration process or 
um, or to generate our key from uh, in an agate computer and write the key to the USB device. Actually, the uh, OpenPGP card has this port. And anti clone counter should be well implemented. For example, the Google and Facebook, they, um, when the, the rolling back event occurs, I think they don't give user, users a well warning. Yes. And uh, as for fast mail, they didn't check at all. So I report this user to them and they confirm it. So with the mitigation from the service provider side, uh, first we should um, downgrade the trust level, as I already mentioned. And the third one is um, we should well implant the prompt detection. First, of course, we, we could aware um, the user's warning. And second, I think, it's very easy way to, to do that because when the rolling back events was detected, the website can revoke, revoke this um, key pair. And maybe we think this is not a very convenient way, user-friendly way to our users, but uh, it's two factor. You just uh, lose a factor. You, you still can use your web, your phone to do a SMS communication or your email. So I think the revoke is not that non-user friendly. So the conclusion is, I think this is uh, can be classified as a supply chain risk. Um, because during this um, manufacturer process, um, it, uh, whether the manufacturer itself or the uh, related supply chain providers, they can do something bad to your cryptographic device. Actually, uh, do, do you remember I just said the um, uh, cryptographic, uh, the security element, the cryptographic chips can do a uh, key to import um, process. Actually, in this open source project, I found we, there is some, um, some sort of time I can generate, I, I can export the master key from the, the generation point. So, um, whether you use the security element or not, the, 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 this issue should be well considered as a supply chain risk. Secondly, I think, uh, as far as I know, we give a, a, a first real-world example of this kind of attack. Um, before, we only have some forum complaints, but this time we have an experiment and I think it's not that, that um, um, bad, but I think it's, all, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real world example. And we found that uneconomic mechanism is not well implemented in some websites. And uh, I think the best uh, um, practice is to walk and revoke. Uh, this, uh, these are my uh, friends in this research, providing ideas. And uh, tuna association, yeah. And future work. I think um, uh, pre uh, in a few weeks before, uh, Fido has a new standard called Fido Two. Uh, they are providing a new authentication um, to to do power, passwordless authentication. But I don't have the time to uh, to take a look at maybe this could be a future work. The second uh, phishing website we we, we could build to try to extract the master key, reversing the HMAC function. Um, um, a friend, of, a teacher, uh, a professor of mine, he's a cryptographic master. He says the HMAC reversion is not that um, difficult. I don't know, maybe this could be a... Uh, so, so, so I think uh, if you can use this open source version, you can roll it back to the original firmware. The original firmware only used the 16 um, key slots inside the security element. So you can only bind these keys to 16, um, 16 websites. I think this is um, secure enough. So thank you. And any questions? Is Sorry. 
that locked the account when too many false counter tries were uh, received? Um, as far as I know, I only tried with three faults, so not that much. So maybe, um, maybe Google now has some new ways to control the rules, but I don't, I don't do this again. Okay, a second question. You mentioned that there is an ad mega chip or uh, admin chip on the board that you use, or um, maybe on the YubiKey too. And I'm not sure, but do you think it's possible to disorder the chip and reset it for reasons and uh, flash your own private key? You, you say to use the fault to reset the key. Yes, I think your pro uh, the problem that you introduce is that the manufacturer can copy the tree, uh, copy the key while flashing it or generating it on the chip. And if I reset the chip at when after I bought it or disordered it uh, and do my own generation, I should be I should be safe if I understand the problem. Yeah, but but the key generation process is not uh, an easy process. You have to send a lot of, as I, I think, the inner commands to the um, uh, to, 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 to the function of the chip. So I think it is only only by fault. It's it's not that easy to, to do regeneration. Okay. Actually, um, uh, some years ago, there is side channel tag on UBT, and the uh, uh, later they fixed it by uh, by another. The, the side channel tag basically is the power. You, you, you use a um, oscilloscope to narrow the voltage and to, during the AES or other uh, pyrographic operation. You, you, some, someone, I, I remember at least three years ago, do this side channel tag to Unity, but they have fixed it. Okay. Main engine cutoffs. Any questions? Okay, then thank you guys. <laughs>